yeah, it's um, so I, I'm I'm so thrilled to be here, and uh, thank you for this warm welcome. Uh, I write uh, children's books about people who inspire me that I hope will inspire the kids. I try to pick people they might not know about otherwise, and. And I, what I'm hoping for in each case is to tell a story that will lead them to want to be the heroes and heroines of their own lives. So th these are true stories. I, I come from the journalism world. And, you know, my very first book, uh, which was on the Texas two by two list, was the William Hoy story about the great deaf baseball player who introduced signs so he could play the game he loved. Did you know that safe and out is American sign language? And I mean, I can take you on a whole tour of the books, but what I do want to focus on are my most recent ones. You know, we didn't get to go to the, to the TLA last year, but last year I was so proud. Uh, so these still feel very new to me. Uh, two books about mighty women. And as a matter of fact, they both made the Mighty Girls list. So again, these are true stories about people you might not have heard about otherwise. Um, Beautiful Shades of Brown, The Art of Laura Wheeler Waring, um, is the true story of the painter, Laura Wheeler Waring, who grew up in a segregated America, and her dream was to see people who looked like her and her family and people she admired on museum walls. And everyone said, well, that's crazy. That's not going to happen. But I always write about people who don't give up who persist, she pursues her craft. Um, she studies at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. She goes to Paris and guess what? We find out that um, her paintings are now in the Smithsonian. Um, by the way, this is an all Texas team here because I'm from Texas and the illustrator, this incredible illustrator, Felicia Marshall, I want you to see her, is also from Texas. She's from Houston. And um, we got permission to reproduce um, Laura Wheeler Waring's paintings in the Smithsonian in the back of the book. That is the incredible painting of Marian Anderson that made me fall in love with Laura Wheeler Waring in the first place. And the thing that I think is, I'm so excited about is that not only will you learn about this painter who deserves to be more widely known, but through her paintings, you will learn about people who deserve to be more widely known because these were the famous people of her day. Um, W.B. Du Bois, the great educator, Harry Burley. Uh, well, people do know Marian Anderson. By the way, I recommend pairing this with When Marian Sings by Pam Yunos Ryan, which is one of my favorites. Um, but Jesse Fawcett, the poet, um, Alice Dunbar Nelson, James Weldon Johnson, who was a big deal on Broadway. This is a chance to get to know all of these incredible people and also to celebrate beautiful shades of brown because what Laura Wheeler Waring was all about was the uniqueness of each and every one of us. Nobody, no group is a monolith. And so when she painted her people, she looked for what made each skin color, each tone unique. And she showed how brown is made up of so many, a rainbow of colors. And there's a rainbow in each of us. And so that, this, and this was my other Mighty Girl book, um, For Spacious Guys, Catherine Lee Bates and the Inspiration for America the Beautiful. I would go around to classrooms and I would sing, oh, beautiful for spacious guys. And then they all sing along with me. They all know that song. And I would say, who wrote it? And then I would get like a lot of blank stares and maybe someone would say Francis Scott Key. No, that's the Star Spangled Banner. Maybe somebody would say Irving Berlin. No, that's God Bless America. Here it is, one of our most famous songs. Um, it's, it's was performed at the inauguration, many inaugurations, and it's written by a woman, Catherine Lee Bates. And not only Catherine Lee Bates, who was a child of the Civil War. And this book takes you through why she wrote this song. Because as a child of the Civil War, she saw her country pulled apart, North and South, families torn apart. She wanted to write a poem that would remind us we're all one American family, to crown ourselves with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. She was trying to bring the country together with this poem. And you know, I mean, 
it just seems like it's a good time to talk about those issues because, um, hey, are we not a little torn apart right now? Are we not a little divided? And this song reminds us we're one American family. She grew up in, in a, the, um, a sea town, Portsmouth, uh, Massachusetts. But as she traveled across America, she began to see that, you know that, that line in the poem, Amber Waves of Grain? Think about that. She grew up beside actual waves, ocean waves. And when she says amber waves of grain, she's talking about how much the farmers in inland farm communities have in common with the people in the sea communities. That's the point of that metaphor. She becomes a suffragette. She fights for women's rights. Remember when she's growing up, women don't have the right to vote. And um, she becomes a reformer. She fights for the rights of the poor. So this woman who wrote America the Beautiful, this is not just a poem about the beautiful scenery. This is a poem about what really makes America beautiful is brotherhood, is standing up for each other, is lifting each other up, equal rights and justice. Yes. And it does end with her voting because what makes America beautiful to her is justice and equal rights. The full poem is here in the back. Um, and, and there's a timeline for all of my books. You're going, when you go to my website, nancychernin.com, it's just my name, N-A-N-C-Y-C-H-U-R-N-I-N.com. You're going to find um, free teacher's guides. You're going to find resources on each one. You're going to find a project for each book. So for this book, the project is Paint Your World. And kids are invited to send photos of paintings or artwork they've done of themselves in their community. For Spacious Skies, the project is called For Spacious Lines because Catherine used her words to bring people together. And I'm hoping kids will also share their words, could be poems, could be prose, about how we together can make America more beautiful. And by that, I mean more just, more kind, and thereby more beautiful. And when you go, and I have a separate project page for each book, so you can go to those pages and see what the children have contributed. And I'm hoping that this will encourage um, educators to use the books. Because as I said from the start, my goal is to not just, not just, but I like to write about people who inspire me, but I want them to inspire kids to be heroes and heroines. I want them to take the next step and see what they can do to paint their world, to be more inclusive, to, uh, to create their own spacious lines um, about how America can be more just, more fair, and thereby more beautiful. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of a sneak peek because, so these are my two Mighty Girl books and I have hopes that, that these will be seen as Mighty Girl books too. Coming out this year in October is Dear Mr. Dickens. I don't have it in hand. I won't have it in print until June. Comes out in October. Dear Mr. Dickens, this is someone, I bet you've never heard of Eliza Davis. Most people haven't. You know who Eliza Davis was? She was a Jewish woman who lived at the time of Charles Dickens. She was so hurt by his creation of Fagin and Oliver Twist and how he, she, he called this awful character who stole and, and lied. And she, he just referred to him as the Jew, the Jew, the Jew, all through Oliver Twist. It was so painful to her as a Jewish woman. And there was so much prejudice against Jewish people in England at that time, other places as well, but in England, which was her community. She wrote him a letter, dear Mr. Dickens. And guess what? He responded. And this true story is the story of these letters that go back and forth and how this Eliza Davis changed Charles Dickens' heart. And you'll find out a lot more about that in the book, but including, I will add this, his last published book, Our Mutual Friend, includes a kindly <laughs> Jewish character named Mr. Rhea. As a matter of fact, Rhea is the Hebrew name for friend. So it's about how speaking up can make a difference. Who was Eliza Davis? She was nobody famous, right? But she wrote up, she spoke up, she changed a heart. And the final book, and I hope we'll have time for a few questions here, 
is going to also in October from a different publisher is a queen to the rescue. The story of Henrietta Zold, founder of Hadassah. You know, we celebrate the wonderful people who save, who save people during the Holocaust, right? The people who hid the people in danger, the people who saved adults and children. Why do we never talk about Henrietta Zold who saved 11,000 children when she was in her seventies? who took a boat to go into Nazi Germany and she was Jewish. She goes into Nazi Germany in the 1930s and convinces these parents to let the children come with her to what is then Palestine because Israel is not yet a state. So she convinces them to let her, them come to Palestine. She looks after all of those children, make sure they find homes, get educations, fulfill their dreams. This is a true story of a woman who made a difference. Um, I'm so excited with you to share her story. And I bet those names are not familiar. And I just want kids to know who they are and to have them inspire them. Oh, final thing before the questions. I know I'm running short on the time, but the project for this one is going to be called Dear Dot 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 because it's going to encourage kids to write letters to people in positions of influence, to change something, to, to make, to right or wrong. And this one is going to be Heal the World. What can you do? to help others the way Henrietta did.